According to a report in The Verge that was kind of lightly sourced, Zuckerberg might announce a Facebook rebranding during their Connect conference this Thursday. The Verge uh, quoted a source with direct knowledge of the matter. So you can take this with a grain of salt. I'm not saying that The Verge is lying, but who knows? You know, when when you only have one person talking about it, not 304, it's thinly sourced. And so this may not be true at all. Some people are speculating that it could be metaverse or meta. He seems to be obsessed with the metaverse. If you haven't heard of the metaverse, that's just the virtual reality space where users can interact with digital, uh, you know, avatars and places. Roblox and Fortnite would be considered metaverses. It's just kind of like a science fiction term. Oculus would certainly be considered one. I don't consider Roblox, Minecraft, and first person shooters like Fortnite the metaverse. I think the metaverse should be reserved for virtual reality, not 2D, and maybe augmented reality in some way. But it's something that has never gotten big. Uh, if you put aside Fortnite, which is obviously huge. Um, it's basically still a pipe dream. We had Second Life for a period of time. We now have Oculus. Very, and I talked about this on the pod last week. You have a very small base of users on those devices. I find that real gamers want to play Fortnite on a PC or on a console, and then casual users want to play casual games on their iPads. So, who exactly is the Oculus for? It's not for hardcore gamers. It's not for casual gamers. The best we could come up with was people who wanted to play the golf simulators and stuff that maybe was hard to do in the real world or expensive to do in the real world, skiing, golf, scuba diving. Uh, rec room seems to be pretty good. Things that make you feel like you're experiencing some real world activity. Uh, Beat Saber comes into mind as well. So if you go to the Connect Conference website at facebookconnect.com, it does have a very metaverse feel. And uh, the conference is, is branded as a front row seat to the future. Great. AR presence and push VR boundaries are listed as two of the topic sessions. So uh, they don't have an AR product, but they do want to push the VR boundaries. This says to me um, that uh, there is something new going on here. Uh, in terms of focus, my inside information is there's a couple of buildings here in uh, the peninsula uh, over by Coyote Point in the airport uh, here in San Francisco by S just south of SFO. Facebook has leased a bunch of buildings, and that's supposedly where they're working on this. And I think Zuckerberg's had enough of dealing with Facebook and things, and I think he wants to go all in on this. And it's he knows he's going to get disrupted, possibly, and that's the next big platform. So he is skating to where the puck is going, whether that takes another five or 10 years or 10 to 20. Um, but he is very concerned about being disrupted in the way Microsoft was. Uh, remember, he was always enamored with Bill Gates as a role model, and he saw Gates not get the mobile phone or the mobile phone operating system right. And he believes that could happen to Facebook. What's really happening here, though, is I think he's going to rename the company, break it into units. Then if you have to take action against the company, you're going to take it against a specific unit. And he could, I think, pull a Larry and Sergey, make himself executive chair, put a CEO in charge of Oculus and put a CEO in charge of the Facebook collection of apps. So Sheryl Sandberg could run one group and then somebody else could run the other. He could be executive chair. He could obviously make all the decisions. He's got voting control. But then when they say, hey, come to Congress, come to the EU, come to this country, we're going to pull your plane out of the air with fire pilots. Remember all that drama? Like he's going to set foot in, on the soil of the UK and he's going to get dragged to uh, parliament. Well, he could just say, I don't work there. I'm not the CEO anymore. I don't have a day to day role. I am the chairman. That's exactly what's happened with Sundar is going uh, and he will testify and Larry and Sergey. They, do, they actually don't work at Google anymore. They work on the big bets, which is what they want to work on anyway. And so they can basically avoid any scrutiny. So we'll see if Congress, senators, and uh, parliament, you know, fall for this trick eventually. I think what they should do is look at has, who has voting control of the shares, and that's the person. So if you're a senator or a congressperson and you're listening, here's how you do it. You can say, bring the CEO. But we want to know who's in control of the board. So who controls the board? Who has the most shares and the most voting power? That's the person we want. And in that case, sorry, Larry and Sergey, sorry, Zuck, you would get uh, have to go and you know have these co tough conversations about society and the impact these technology companies have, which is a totally legitimate thing for us to have conversations about. And so you know the 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 article also notes that the new name is a closely guarded secret. 
uh, and even senior leadership at Facebook is unaware. If you were going to do a rebranding like this and you were CEO, what you would do is you would come up with 10 names, you'd have 10 logos designed, and you would narrow it down. And you would have your press team write up all 10 press releases, a landing page, and then nobody would know. And then you would print it. Just like when they, um, I understand when they did the Luke Skywalker cameo in the second season of Mandalorian, spoiler alert, if you didn't see it by now, it's your fault. Um, they actually filmed some other Jedi at, in that position so that even if people got on set or somebody had figured it out, they wouldn't be able to leak it because there were different endings that were filmed. And they've done that before with other TV shows where they film multiple endings. I think they did it with that show Lost as well. This way people couldn't guess or couldn't leak more accurately. Um, and then finally in the Facebook world, uh, internal Facebook documents obtained by The Verge. It seems like today was document dump day. I think all the journalists got all of these documents at the same time and were all agreed to make their stories come out today. That US teenage users have declined by 13% uh, since 2019 on Facebook. This is a big story, I think. Um, and it would match maybe what their growth issues are. Maybe they're keeping everybody who's above, you know, 25 years old, but they're just not getting young people. That would vibe with what we see in the real world with people who are younger liking TikTok. Uh, or maybe um, Snapchat. The internal documents were part of those disclosures made to the SEC and Congress by Facebook whistleblower uh, Francis Haugen. The Verge obtained the redacted versions of these documents that were received by Congress. Uh, the specific document in question was an internal memo sent by a Facebook researcher earlier this year. Some more stats from that memo. U.S. teenage users were also projected to drop 45% over the next two years. Young adults between the ages of 20 and 30 were expected to decline by 4%. During the same time period, this all uh, aligns. Uh, and on average, the younger a user was, the less likely they engaged on Facebook. This makes sense. The way these are going to work, uh, social networks, that is, uh, the way social networks will work is they will be generational, maybe multi-generational. Uh, and every generation or two, you'll see them turn over as younger people don't want to hang out with their grandparents. Like if you're on Facebook and you're 19 or 20 years old, you're kind of hanging out with your grandparents and your parents. It's bad enough you're hanging out with your parents, but you don't want to hang out with your grandparents. That's crazy. And so you'll see multiple arcs of the life of a social network like we saw for AOL, MySpace, etc. The only ones that may uh, cross over would be something like LinkedIn for business because, you know, business is still being done there and how could you not have one? Uh, so quote from The Verge, the researcher predicted that if, quote, increasingly fewer teens are choosing Facebook as they grow older, the company would face a more severe decline in young users than it already projected. Now, this isn't as bad as it seems. As we saw in the revenue, older people have more money to spend they have more disposable income. They make more decisions about money. So Facebook would benefit as people get older because they have more discretionary spending and people want to reach those people. That being said, for certain categories of advertising, you want young people, the avant-garde, and although they may not spend that money, a lot of people know that if you become a BMW driver, or a Mini Cooper driver, and they get you for your first car in one of those cars, you might keep going and buy two or three of those, right? Anybody out there ever buy two or three of the same brand, Tesla, Beamers, Mercedes, Hondas, like some people just get locked into a brand. And so there's a lot of spending, a disproportionate amount of spending compared to the outcome, uh, the output being how much how much you spend. So you may want to get somebody in that BMW that costs 40,000, they have some of those entry level models in order to eventually get them up to a BMW 7 or, you know, whatever the, the more expensive ones are as they move up uh, socioeconomically and with discretionary spending. As founders, investors, and executives, we spend so much time building up the companies and products that we love and care about. But at the end of the day, life is fragile and it can get taken away at any moment. You know that. So it makes sense why people get life insurance, especially term coverage, which is surprisingly affordable. Why not pay a little bit each month to protect the ones you love? It's a no brainer. If you're asking yourself this question, choose Ladder. Ladder makes it really fast and easy to get covered. You just need a few minutes and a phone or laptop to apply. Ladder smart algorithms work in real time. So you'll find out instantly if you're approved. And that's one of the great things about the service. It's just so quick and easy to use. There are no hidden fees. You cancel anytime. And since life insurance costs more as you age, now is the time for you to cross it off your list and make sure it's there. So 
Go check out Ladder today and see if you're instantly approved. You'll find out very quick. Go to ladderlife.com slash twist. Again, L-A-D-D-E-R, life.com slash twist. That's L-A-D-D-E-R, life.com slash twist. Ladderlife.com slash twist to see if you'll get approved. Do it now.